Hello, my name is Chris and today I want to talk about the one thing that really works when you're trying to quit smoking. I'm going to make this video for you. You who has tried absolutely everything that you can possibly think of to quit and yet nothing has quite worked. You who has gone through all the patches, pills, potions, lotions, lozenges, self-help books, hypnosis, all of that stuff and yet you still find yourself occasionally picking up a cigarette and having to start again. I'm going to make this for you who is riddled with frustration and uh, the stress of feeling like you're never going to be able to do it, like I am never going to be able to quit smoking successfully. I'm going to make this for you and before I do I'm going to tell you the good news is that yes you are, you are going to do it and you are going to be successful at it. I know this because I have been successful at it and trust me that, that doesn't come from any place of ego that comes from a place of you know, if someone like me can quit smoking then you definitely can. How do I know that this is what you're going through right now? How do I know that you're like tearing your hair out and you're throwing things against the wall and you're like help just somebody please tell me what to do. I know this because, because I know what you look for when you search for my videos. <laughs> if you've ever created a YouTube video of your own, you may already know this, there's a thing called YouTube Analytics, you can use it for different things. One of the things tells you the terms that people search for when they're looking for your videos. And I was looking at this yesterday because I was trying to come up with new ideas for my own videos and I thought I'll look there and I'll see what people are searching for and what I might be able to help them with. And right down at the bottom of this list, this didn't have as many people searching for it as things like Champix or 100 Days Smoke Free or things like that. But it's just stood out to me and it was about three people had searched for some variation of help. I've tried everything and nothing works. What really works to quit smoking? And as soon as I saw this, the three people that had searched for it, were you one of them? If you were, then my heart goes out to you entirely. I have been there, trust me. That's how I know that you're, that's what you're going through. I have been there so many times it is not even funny. And yet, I have managed to quit smoking and I consider it a successful quit attempt. I have now not smoked for a year and ooh, two months and I feel absolutely fantastic. I feel better than I have felt in my entire life and like I say if I can do this then you can definitely do it because I've failed so many times to quit smoking. I was like you, I tried all the patches, pills, potions, lotions, lozenges. I didn't try hypnosis but I did try self help books and things like that. And nothing quite gave me long term, you know, smoke free. The first time that I tried to quit was like 2000, I think it was 2006. And I tried the patches, I just slapped one there and off I go about my day. And those worked for a small amount of time. I think it was maybe six months tops that I didn't smoke for. No, it can't have been as long as that. Maybe four months. But at some point, the last sort of desperate vestiges of nicotine that were in my body and the mental side of it were like, we're going to make one last attempt to pull Chris back into being a smoker. And it just got too much for me and I caved and I started smoking again. And I smoked for like a good couple of years, maybe two years. And then I thought I'll try to quit again. And I bought um, a book that you probably already know about. It's called The Easy Way to Stop Smoking by Alan Carr. At some point way down the line, I want to do a review of that book. Um, I do think it is a very well written book and has lots of good information on it and I know that it has helped a lot of people but it didn't work for me. It worked for a day I 
think. It might have been a week, but certainly no more than a week, and I'm pretty sure it was only a day. I even tried it last year when I was trying to quit, and it lasted an hour. So for all the people that are big fans of Alan Carr and the books that he does, I'm not saying this to, to dismiss that. It, it works for some people, I'm sure it does. It just it didn't work for me. Although, some things that were in that book I kept and I retained the information and it helped long term. Then, the next time I tried to quit, I tried with Champix, actually. And, again, I think I did a couple of months. And then I, I remember this story plain as day. I went watching Bob Dylan play a concert in Blackpool, Lancashire, which is near where I live. <laughs> and just I get a bit of anxiety from time to time and the amount of people that were there. And I was like, oh, I can't deal with this. It's too much. I started smoking again that day. And, and then again for about another year, two years. Until I ended up in hospital with something completely unrelated to smoking. It was a stomach problem I had. But I was in a hospital bed for a week and didn't feel much like getting up to go anywhere, let alone for a cigarette. So I kind of did the cold turkey thing too. And that failed because again, the, when most of the nicotine and most of the cravings have gone, there is that last little bit that tries so desperately to make you smoke again. And if you're not ready, it will get you and it got me. Fast forward about another two years to last year, I finally, I was able to quit smoking. For, I haven't had a cigarette since September last year. And again, I started using Champix. But here's the thing. The fact that I used Champix before and it didn't work, and the fact that I used Champix this time and it did work, they haven't... As far as I know anyway, they haven't improved the formula for Champix. They haven't upped the dose. There wasn't some sort of magic ingredient they put in that this time it worked for me. I had to do things a lot differently. And it wasn't the actual Champix itself. Because once that kicks in, it's then up to me. Champix can only do so much if I want to stay smoke free. The absolute brutally blunt, honest truth is that it is up to me and it is up to you and it is up to John next door if he wants to stop smoking to do it. And I found that the only way I was going to do it and do it long term was to change my entire mindset and the entire way that I thought about smoking and not smoking. I had to change the way I thought about all of it. Starting with this concept of, oh my God, I can never have a cigarette ever again for the rest of my life. I have quit smoking, that is it, I'm done. I've got to go out there into the big stressful scary world all on my own and never smoke a cigarette again. I've got to do this forever. Whether consciously or subconsciously there is a part of me that is terrified by the enormity of this concept of forever. That is overwhelmed by this idea that for the rest of my living days I can never smoke a cigarette again. I've got to, I've got, I'm undertaking a challenge that is going to last me a lifetime. It is huge. It is enormous. It is scary. It is stressful. It is, oh my God, I can't do it. It's too much. Oh my God, give me a cigarette. <sighs> That's better. That's what my early attempts were like. I'm quitting forever. Subconsciously, it was too stressful. I changed all my mindset about that. I changed the entire way I think. I'm, I've no longer quit smoking for the rest of my life. I have quit smoking until I go to bed tonight. And then I won't smoke in bed, because that's a fire hazard. <laughs> and then tomorrow morning, I'll just do another day. I do it one day at a time. That is much easier 
for me to deal with them forever. It is far less stressful. I don't need to beat myself up if I'm feeling like I'm having a bad day because I nearly smoked. I only have to not smoke for a day. If, if I cannot get from the end, from waking up in the morning to going to bed at night and not have a cigarette, can I not have a cigarette this morning? Can I not have a cigarette between breakfast and lunch? Between lunch and dinner? Between dinner and bedtime? If I can't even do that, can I not have a cigarette for the next hour? If I can't get an hour, can I make it the next 10 minutes, the next 5 minutes? Can I physically just stand here now and not smoke? I have to break it all the way down. I don't have to quit smoking tomorrow, a year from now, 10 years from now. I don't have to worry about what will happen when this thing happens and I feel stressed or this thing happens. I have to worry about right now. That might sound a bit wishy-washy and ooh, blah, blah, but it works for me because it takes all the pressure off, man. Quitting smoking is an enormous undertaking in its own right. Make it as easy as possible. There is no pride or like there are no prizes for saying for like that, that most difficult quit attempt that you you had to endure more pain than I did, so therefore you're better than me or or I got more stressed and closer to it picking up again than you did, so I'm better than you. It's not like make life easy for yourself. For me that means I don't smoke on a daily basis. And I'm not even saying that every single morning I have to be reminded that I'm an ex-smoker, that I have to get up in the morning and go, right, today I'm not going to smoke. It becomes so ingrained into my life that I don't smoke, that after a while I stop having to make that decision. And when the cravings have come, again I break it down. Well, my brain is telling me to have a cigarette, but I'll delay it. I'll delay it for an hour, then another hour. I'll delay it till tonight. I'll delay it till tomorrow. Eventually, I don't need to delay it because it's, the thought has gone. But that isn't the only way that I had to change my whole entire mindset about smoking. If you've got a moment, go and check out a video that I made right at the start of 2017 when I was a hundred days smoke free and I talk about this horrible part of me that when things are not going my way needs to change the way that I feel about myself but yet has so little value for me or so little sense of self worth that to change the way I feel I will purposely poison myself. I will put smoke and tar and gunk and shite into my lungs and that will change the way I feel. No normal, rational, sane human being would ever self-destruct or destroy themselves on, like, so regularly on such an intense basis just because things weren't going their way. It's insanity. And yet a lot of the addiction to nicotine is pure insanity. When I quit smoking and I realised I was onto something, that I was making it, that sense of wanting to self-destruct and, and I keep wanting to say self-harm and I don't say that to undermine people who have gone through struggles with self-harming, but to me smoking is a form of self-harming. And it shows to me that it was like a lack of self-worth or, you know, my, my self-esteem was so low. But when I quit smoking, I realised I couldn't use a cigarette. I, how I realised that this was an issue for me was because I kept self-destructing with something else. I gained weight because I just swapped cigarettes for food and started eating and putting fat and sugar and crap into my body. Again, it's harming myself. I had to start changing my mindset and develop this sense of, yes, you know what, I actually, I am worthy of being smoke-free. I am allowed 
to be happy and healthy and not stink and not cough up my lungs every morning. I am allowed to have a beautiful life, which I do today. I don't have to self-harm or self-destruct or destroy myself anymore. Things sometimes don't go my way. Some things I still sometimes stress me out. Today, I have the gift of choice. I can choose to drink, smoke, eat, take drugs, or I can choose to do something positive. I can choose to make a video and talk to you guys, go out on my mountain bike, take some photographs, meditate, write in my gratitude journal, any of that stuff. And this gratitude journal is, I have spoke about it in a few videos and it's been a game changer for me, it really has. In fact, if you do nothing else as a result of this video, do this because it, it has changed the way I think about my life. You may have heard other people talking about an attitude of gratitude. Now, apart from just being something that sounds cool or sounds fun or whatever, it's fundamentally true that the more grateful I am, the less I want to smoke. I had to change the whole way that I view my non-smoking life. I had to stop thinking that I was losing out. I'm not, when I stopped smoking, I wasn't losing like smoking or you know nicotine or buying cigarettes I was gaining so much I was gaining health wealth freedom happiness new friends because I don't go and hang out with the smokers anymore I'll stay inside with the people who've got their heads screwed on and make new friends the gifts of a smoke free life are amazing and I have to cultivate this attitude of gratitude around them and be so grateful for my life as a non-smoker that if I do ever think about picking up a cigarette again it strikes me immediately I've got so much to lose today and I know there may be some of you thinking well I don't have much to be grateful for and this isn't going to work for me try it what have you got to lose? You've already tried everything else, why not try this? I'm not saying it's the magic cure, but combined with other things, it really helped change my mindset and make me value the life that I've got and not want to go back and self-destruct anymore. I also have to change my mindset in how I think about smoking. I mentioned in one of my other videos about a book by a guy called Paul McKenna, you might have heard of him. Uh, it's called, what's it called? It's called Quit Smoking Today. Today, not tomorrow or yesterday or next week. Quit Smoking Today. I love a lot of Paul McKenna's work. This book by itself did not make me quit smoking today or a year ago. But there is a very cool technique in here that I used and it really helped. It was to imagine smoking at the same time as imagining the most disgusting thing I can think of. You build up an idea and you, you a visual in your mind of like the worst food, the worst smell, the worst touch, the worst possible, most disgustingly horrible things you can think of and at the same time as you're visualising that, you visualise yourself smoking and I don't understand the science behind it but the two thoughts combine in your mind and smoking becomes horrible. I thought about things like raw fish and snot and <laughs> just saying that in my throat was <laughs> so I'll stop but I thought about the most disgusting things I could think of and it worked not entirely but it was it sort of you know it was another tool that I could use on a similar note I learned to 
recall very vividly how horrible my last cigarette was. As I said, I, I, Champix helped me and if you don't know much about Champix, it basically, I'm simplifying now, as I understand it, it basically blocks off anything in your brain that gets any pleasure from smoking and leaves just the most horrible, disgusting experience. It's smoking for what it really is with no chemicals to trick you into thinking, this is great. So my last cigarette was like over there <laughs> and it was awful. I was like trying to force this horrible crap down into my lungs and coughing it back up. The tightness, the burning in my chest. I coughed that much, my eyes were watering and I, I am sorry to gross you out now. You might want to skip ahead about five seconds if you are easily grossed out. I threw up. I barfed all over my kitchen floor, it was nasty. So now I have taught myself so many times that when I think about what smoking was like, I think about that experience. So to me now smoking is a disgusting horrible thing that I never want to do again. Whereas in previous quit attempts I was still in the mindset that Smoking was relaxing, or it was fun, or it was sociable, or it was sexy. Sexy. I've never been sexy in my life, that is fine. It was all these good things, and I just had to swap the association round. So now, you know, now if I'm tempted, I think, well, I can have a cigarette, but I've got all this disgusting filth from throwing up and all that crap. Or I can not smoke, and I can go and out in nature and breathe some fresh air and talk to my friends on YouTube and all that good stuff. So I have been given the gift of choice today and I choose to come and talk to you guys or to go outside and play on my bike. So it was the mindset that made the biggest difference. Now what I'm not telling you to do is to Abandon patches, pills, potions, lotions, lozenges, <laughs> hypnosis, self-help books. I'm not telling you that. There is no law that says you can only use one thing at one time to quit smoking. Pick the best bits of all the things that you have tried so far and put them together into one complete thing that works for you. If you got a bit of success on on patches, but then you picked up again and you felt the patches were working, but then something happened, your girlfriend broke up with you, your boyfriend called you a nasty name, something like that, and then you smoked again. Go back to the patches and get all the techniques. Combine the patches with a gratitude journal, with training you to think about a different way of uh, thinking about cigarettes, with thinking about cigarettes as this awful experience, with valuing, um, I nearly said sobriety, I meant quitting smoking. <laughs> Combine it with different things. If you need more help, go and get more help. And try, try, try again. If you pick up a cigarette again, please for me do not beat yourself up about it. You are not the first person that has tried to quit smoking and, and not been successful at it the first or even the tenth time around. You are not, you certainly won't be the last person that this will happen to either. Every day people struggle to quit smoking. But what sets you apart from all those people is that you care enough to come on YouTube and spend 20 minutes with me talking about it. Whereas other people go, oh that was too hard, I'll never do it. Bollocks to it, I'll just smoke and get cancer and die. You already want this enough. 
that you've gone the extra step to try and get help. So it can be done. Combine anything I've talked about in this video or any of my other videos with help from the doctor, with help from other people on YouTube, with help from patches, from help from there, with help with Champix, whatever it takes. Please do not beat yourself up though if you pick up a cigarette again. Just start again. Because in my experience, beating myself up, and I beat myself up many, many, many times, again comes back to that self-destruct thing. I would go, well, I failed, and I picked up a cigarette and I started smoking again. That means I'm a terrible person, and I'll never get it, so what's the point? I'll just have another cigarette. And then you're back on that vicious cycle. You start to feel worse about yourself, so you, you know, for my experience, I started eating again and smoking, and oh, am I so glad I got out of that mess. You can do it, and like I say, I'm not saying this out of any kind of false thing, because I want you to like me by saying you can do it. But I genuinely believe that you can, because I know what I have been through to get a year and two months smoke-free. And it was horrible, and at times I didn't think I was going to make it. But I did, somehow, with all this combination of gratitude, mindset, Yes, Champix, I'm not ashamed of that. It worked for me. If I can do it, you can do it. If you want to talk, reach for me on Twitter, at um, Smoke Free Living. Go and check out my pictures on Instagram of me spending all my time in fresh air on my mountain bike. And leave me a comment and we'll chat there. My Instagram is Chris Scoils. It's the same as my YouTube without the um, space. Leave a comment down here. Let me know, actually, in the comments, if there is something that I haven't addressed in all of my videos so far that I could talk about that would be useful for you. Um, you know, whether it is about Champix or different smoking cessation methods or anything else. and Because it, it'll give me some ideas and if it's going to be useful for you, then that's great. Also, do you know one of my favourite things since I've started making these videos is when people will comment down below and say I've got a month or a hundred days or whatever it is I love that, I love talking to people who are on their, their journey and finding out how you're doing so let me know how you're getting on and like I see if you fall off the wagon get back on I'll still be here as I always say I will hold your hand we will, we will get through this together that's all I've got to say for today Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.